Hello, this is Daniel Murphy here with our presentation for the team assignment. Uh, we decided to do a transit map that can represent a number of vehicles passing through a specific area from location to location. Uh, so I'll go ahead and run that. First off, we have our main map. We will go ahead and run this with one vehicle 100 times to see how it looks with one vehicle. So pulling that up, we can see the one vehicle marked zero passing from location to location. Now, one interesting thing about this is how the locations are marked. The whole program is going in a loop, and so the locations have to wait for the loop to get back to them to pass it. Uh, our loop starts on the right, and it's technically passing in order around. So every pass uh, will go around quicker if it's on if it's further around the loop rather than uh, at at the or it'll pass again if it's earlier on. So this is just an example of how it works with exactly one. You can see it going back and forth between the locations. This is based specifically on a destination. We don't see the destination here, as well as uh, a path that it needs to follow. We use Dijkstra's algorithm to find this path. So for one, you can see it going in and out pretty simply. I'll go ahead and close this really quick, and we're going to run it for more vehicles. 100 loops is about good, so we'll leave it at that for now. So we'll go ahead and run it for 50 vehicles. Oops, my num block was not on. 50 vehicles, 100 times. Pulling that back up, you now see we have a large number of vehicles being, being passed back and forth between uh, between the locations. Now, some interesting facts. Uh, because we use Dij Dijkstra's algorithm, certain locations are favored over, over other locations to pass through. For instance, along, uh, you can see my mouse, I believe, along the top right two locations, you will almost always see two pass. This, uh, this in the graph, has the is the lowest weighted edge and will almost always have one pass by. Similarly, between the right two most, the, this, uh, the one that's going between 18 and 20-ish, and the one that says three, you will almost never see one pass there due to its high weighted unless it is going directly to uh, one of those two locations. Finally, there is a location with only one slot. That is uh, this location marked four over here. Now, what's interesting here is the way that our program is uh, written. It uh, each location passes the uh, the ve a vehicle to another location, and then. Uh, that location can pass a vehicle back. This is based on symbol tables and queues, where each location will go through a symbol table and pass their first vehicle in the queue. Now, since there's only one queue in the location marked four over on the left, that means that only one vehicle can leave at a time. Similarly, this one that has 10, almost always has a vehicle in the queue to send to the location marked four. That means that they're sending a vehicle back and forth almost constantly, and that means that this location very rarely will go down from four. Uh, interestingly, because it only has one input, it also cannot go up from four. So you saw a few passes around. You saw how it was. Um, each one would pass, and that ran about 100 times. So now we're going to run it for a very large end. Now, uh, one issue that we haven't quite uh, handled is when you get above a certain amount, uh, some of the vehicles don't display, or some of the numbers don't display correctly. So we're going to run it for 999 for 100 loops one more time. Now you can see that most of these uh, vehicles do not display correctly. However, you uh, the idea behind them passing back and forth still works. Now the numbers in uh, each of these are now maxed out at essentially how long the queues are. Uh, at this point, it's very little. Um, there's very little variation in the numbers, and this is because every queue is both receiving and sending one out almost every time. Now you can see they are changing a bit, but it's nothing drastic like from 30 to 50 all of a sudden, it's within a, a, a dozen or so. And this is because almost every time they're sending and receiving out of all of their queues. And so as you get larger and larger, you kind of get that, that issue as well. So this was a brief explanation of how our symbol table works in order to pass the numbers in between our different, uh, our different locations. Uh, some improvements we would like to add include making sure that the numbers all look correctly. Uh, we had a different graph, but I chose not to show it here because this represented our project well enough. So thank you for watching. I hope everybody has a great day. Bye.